Hey, it's Mike here, and today, popular alternative health magnate Dr. Mercola appears to have changed his tune on a keto diet. He has quit it, and he explains why. And this is interesting because he's going from what he describes as somebody who wrote a best-selling book on the topic and popularized the keto diet, we'll look into that more, to somebody who says, hey, your body actually does need carbs, I'm off the keto diet. Your body needs sugar, it absolutely needs sugar. If you don't get it, you will be dead shortly. Uh, and because you're being a hypoglycemic coma, that's what happens. You just, you have to have sugar. Your brain requires it. It's absolutely imperative. He talks about what can be described as his metabolic logic against a keto diet, as well as actually a study that motivated him to stop. But he has a long history of pseudoscientific claims. So of course he does make some claims that I disagree with as well. And so we'll look at this from all sides. Finally, I wanna talk about why it has just been exploding in the news that he is now an ex-ketoist, ketoer keto in you know, when by contrast something like a popular ex-vegan doesn't get any media attention i'm joking this has not been covered by the news at all and we're going to talk about why that might be let's go you might not know who dr mercola is and even if you do you might not know that much about him so let's just do a quick background on this guy joseph mercola is an osteopathic physician which yes in this case actually is a type of real medical doctor unlike a lot of those low carb doctors who are actually chiropractors and he is an alternative health guy who has been promoting and selling a lot of supplements and he has now apparently achieved over $100 million worth of net worth from this, which considering that he's been deemed like one of the top spreaders of pseudoscientific information is a little disturbing. He is the ultimate super spreader, not of the coronavirus experts say, but of misinformation about COVID-19. His name is Dr. Joseph Mercola. He even had to fork up $3 million after getting sued over health claims he made about his tanning beds. Definitely stay off tanning beds for your skin health. And on three separate occasions, the FDA warned Mercola that his company was making illegal claims for their product's ability to detect, prevent, and treat disease. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, he was nominated for the Shorty Award for Health. Shorty's like a melody in my Yes, it appears they have an official game show where they decide which shorty has the best health. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to drop it low enough because he didn't take enough of his own $50 joint formula. So he, he didn't win over the judges. I'm kidding, there is no such game show. I should probably just delete everything I just said, but I know that some of you just watched this for the jokes that I probably should delete. Anyway, moving on. Again, he claims he sort of popularized keto by making that best-selling book. But first, I just wanna say the footage is really low quality. It's like 240p and it's sped up and I could not find the original high quality video for the life of me, but shout out to Red Pill Vegan for finding the repost of it on Twitter. Anyway, here he is. Many of you may recall that I helped popularize keto. And in fact, in 2017, I wrote a book called Fat for Fuel, which when it was released was the number one book sold in the United States uh, overall. So then he says he was sold on keto and the whole philosophy behind it and how the metabolic stuff worked. I believed at the time that that was the best fuel that you could use to generate energy in your body. But he more recently learned some things and I'm happy he's open to learning some things that made him change his mind. And the first has to do with sort of metabolic things, but the most important one that he covers has to do with mortality. Because you know that over the years, I've had to respond to low carbers and every time I'm like, here are these meta-analyses showing about 30% increased risk of all-cause mortality on a low-carb diet. And it's as if they just can't hear what I'm saying. Like these studies don't exist in their low carb universe. Here is an accurate graphic that I have created, head in the sand with the studies right there. But get this, Mercola admits to recently discovering this mortality risk. In fact, in a new study I haven't even mentioned, here he is. And in fact, a study was published just recently, in May of 2023, that was done to show what the differences are between a low carb, high fat diet, which I was promoting and recommending, and a low fat, high carb diet. Yes, this study from the Journal of Internal Medicine is 
from 2023, in fact, online ahead of print. It looked at nearly 400,000 people in middle age and over the course of the study where they were following people for you know, over 20 years each about, they recorded over 160,000 deaths. So this is a lot of scientific information. Also fun fact, and also most importantly, the study was co-authored by pop star Dua Lipa's cousin, Duo Lee. <laughs> Lindy heard what I said and she said, I didn't know that Dua Lipa had a cousin. <laughs> Obviously, that's also a joke. Anyway, here he is. Well, wouldn't you know, both of those groups had a difference of 30% changes in their mortality rate. One, the low carb, high fat diet increased their mortality rate by 30%, whereas the, the converse, the low fat, high carb actually decreased it. Yeah, you can bet if a vegan study found that much higher mortality for vegans, low carb people would probably never shut up about it. And for more details, the study looked at a overall carb score, a healthy and an unhealthy score for the low and the high carb diets. And for that higher carb one, the healthy diet was associated with 34% lower mortality, which is quite huge. And the healthier was defined by like more whole grain etc. And then in terms of the unhealthy low carb diet, that was defined by less plant protein and more animal protein, meaning the healthy low carb diet was a more plant based low carb diet. And in particular, there's just an overall increased mortality, worse situation, less healthy diets with saturated fat consumption. As the study mentions in particular, isocaloric or matched calorie replacement of 3% energy from saturated fat with other macronutrient subtypes was associated with significantly lower total and cause specific mortality. But saturated fat and cholesterol levels have nothing to do with health. Wrong. But I should mention his keto book came out six years ago. Guess what came out about 10 years ago? You know, this meta-analysis showing low carb diets are associated with a 30% increased mortality as well. He should have been able to find this information. And speaking of his book, he just admitted that he's been promoting a deadly diet for years. So, so bro, pull your book, just take it off the shelves. Is $200 million not enough for you? No, my guess is he still wants to sell that keto book. He wants to sell his keto krill, his keto creamer, and his keto cider, his apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna start selling keto water. Finally, a water with no carbs. Now your husband will love you again. So besides the mortality issue, which he says he discovered after already starting to change his mind, what was his main motivation here? Here he is. Your body needs sugar. It absolutely needs sugar. If you don't get it, you will be dead shortly. Uh, and because you're being a hypoglycemic coma. That's what happens. You just, you have to have sugar. Your brain requires it. It's absolutely imperative. I know a lot of keto people are going to be really triggered by that statement. Like, no, it's the best fuel in the world. It can run everything. Yeah, you can run the majority of your body on ketones physically, but it is still the case that your brain is gonna cap off at about 60 to 75% of fuel from ketones, depending on the study. So that means the rest of your brain needs glucose that was created by your liver in a really inefficient process. How does your body make sugar? I did not know this, I did not appreciate it. I did not realize this was the mechanism, but I'll share the mechanism with you. You might be as equally shocked as I will. It makes a hormone that you all have heard of called cortisol. Now, if you, if you study cortisol and look at up its functions, you'll find that it's, it's designed for glucose homeostasis, but it does, Far more than that, it's actually a rescue hormone that your body has because if your blood sugar gets too low, you're gonna die. Yes, that is true. I have covered this before in my keto debunked video, cortisol levels are higher in a keto diet. And from this study, in fact, the keto dieters had 40% higher cortisol than the low fat group, which is no joke. But I thought all that keto cortisol was just from seeing bread and not being able to eat it, which makes me feel really bad for them. It's very rare where someone ever dies from a hypoglycemic coma. Uh, because their cortisol level rescues them, but they will die prematurely from the effects of elevated cortisol, chronic inflammation, because that's its other purposes. And yeah, cortisol has a ton of negative effects, including really the reason that most people go on a keto diet to begin with, which has to do with how your body stores fat. Yes, it appears that higher cortisol increases the amount of fat deposition into your midsection. And one sort of exaggerated example of this is people with Cushing syndrome, which is a disease that causes high cortisol levels. And you can see that their limbs remain quite thin, they don't store much fat there, but their midsection accumulates abdominal visceral fat, unfortunately. So thankfully we have cortisol and uh, when it's activated, it will send signals to your body to break down your muscles, your bones and brain. Why? Because it needs amino acids, which is going to use as the raw material 
to make glucose in a process called gluconeogenesis in your liver. And this is where I need to start reining him in a little bit. Will a few weeks on a keto diet start eating up your brain to make glucose? Probably not likely. Maybe if you do it long enough and you've eaten up all the rest of your muscle. But to back the general claim that your body might take some fat-free mass like muscle and create glucose. Yeah, from this NIH-funded study by Kevin Hall on a keto versus a low-fat diet, we can see from these charts that, yeah, there's that initial total weight loss, which tricks people into thinking that everything is going awesome on a keto diet. But if you look at what it is, it's essentially not fat at all. It's all lean mass or fat-free mass, which includes things like muscle, but also glycogen. However, as this study mentions, we only have about 600 grams of glycogen in our body. So even depleting all of that, there's still something else missing. You know, maybe that's some water weight or something. Maybe it's muscle. Who knows? But by contrast, as you can see by the blue line over there on the right, the low fat diet is losing fat mass, which is good to know. Anyway, moving on. That elevated cortisol level is a primary way that you're going to age. It is literally the primary aging hormone. So if you are interested in living longer and living healthy, then you're gonna to wanna to lower your cortisol levels. Yes, well, it is necessary in normal amounts. Excess cortisol has negative effects. Maybe it's one of the areas that makes the keto diet less healthy, but really, he seems to just be forgetting about the main reason here, which is animal fat clogging arteries <laughs> and killing people that way. But now let's fast forward a bit to some of his claims on carbs, which are almost going too far in the other direction or are just kind of weird. All right, so an interesting thing happened that has never happened before in me making a video. And that was that the original footage was deleted between the time that I was filming the video and editing it. And so all of the footage you've seen of Mercola so far was actually from Red Pill Vegan's video. He only had six minutes of it. And beyond that, he made some very interesting claims. And so I will just sort of paraphrase them I'll try to get them as best as I can, but they no longer exist, so here it goes. When including carbohydrates in your diet, you don't want just any carbohydrate, you want simple carbs. Yeah, he said that. Simple carbs are better. Why, why does he just have to land in the wrong place always? He can't just stick with the actual science. You don't wanna create endotoxins in your gut, which are created by eating complex carbs with fiber, which delay carb digestion, so gut bacteria then digest it and turn it into endotoxins. Brown rice is bad, but white rice is good. He's saying that intestinal bacteria creates these bacterial endotoxins from complex or whole carbohydrate foods. Let's investigate this, but this is also really funny because this only study that he cited here specifically says that those complex whole carbs are healthier in terms of these patterns that are associated with lower mortality. <laughs> but do endotoxins created in the colon from these complex carbs kill you? Uh, well, as this paper on the topic mentions, fiber, which is in those complex carbs, decreases endotoxin production while dietary fat increases it. What dietary fat are they talking about? Quote, in particular, saturated fatty acids in the intestines results in reduced microbial diversity and an increased abundance of a bacteria that creates the main endotoxin, LPS, which could be absorbed by the presence of dietary fat in the intestine as well. So a one-two punch of fat. And as this nice little chart shows, yeah, those plant fibers and thylakoids, which are essentially just plant membranes, create a little wall blocking those endotoxins. Endotoc to you later. And the conclusion of this study, <laughs> which is dedicated to this topic of endotoxins, is the exact opposite of what Mercola says with respect to carbs, quote, diets with large amounts of saturated fat, animal products, and refined carbohydrate may induce endotoxemia more markedly than diets containing fiber-rich plant-based foods. And another important point is I think he did make the right decision by quitting keto though, because a lot of people on keto love to eat, you know, fried up steaks and meat. But this randomized control trial of 117 people found that quote, fried meat intake impaired glucose homeostasis and increased intestinal endotoxin and systemic inflammation levels by influencing the gut microbiota. We've already established he's wrong, but from this study in terms of diabetes, brown rice is associated with lower type two diabetes, 
but white rice is associated with higher, you know, you need that fiber. The healthiest carbohydrates are whole ripe fruits. I think I got that one word for word. Whew, at least he says that fruit is good. Yes, it is associated with lower mortality. However, as this study found, you don't wanna be replacing complex carbs with refined fructose, which is not fruit. I'm talking about refined fructose, in this case, in the form of little jellies, increased endotoxin levels. Don't do that. So stay away from all the high fructose corn syrup and refined fructose, please. But to wrap up the endotoxin subject, fiber rich whole carbs are helping here when, you know, refined carbs, and of course those animal fats are not helping. But now I wanna move on to a topic, which I think might actually be at the heart of this, which is just how keto as a diet is losing popularity. As one article mentioned, you know, in the last few years, the amount of Google searches for keto diet has dropped by about 87%. There have also been multiple high profile diet health rankings and keto has been at the bottom of this. Them, so I think people are being turned off from it in addition to how it's difficult to follow and has potentially bad side effects as well as negative health disease related effects. Yeah, you get the point. But many people also had challenges following the low carb diet, especially for a long time. However, don't get me wrong, keto diets still are quite popular. I mean, we've got the shelves and grocery stores loaded with random sad keto products like keto bread or bread without a soul. I guess you don't want bread to have a soul anyway. His book is still probably responsible for putting a lot of people on a keto diet and increasing their amount of animal fat and raising their cholesterol and risk for what he is saying he's quitting for, mortality. I'm laughing, but it's not funny. Anyway, moving on to what I would like to call the X keto phenomenon in that it isn't a phenomenon, unlike ex-vegans who, you know, if a high profile one goes and quits, it's all over YouTube, it's all over, you know, even news sites and all these people are like, ha ha, vegan diets don't work. And I think I have a video response to every major one of those stories and the inconsistent claims in those. But my point here is that people like to make the vegan ones popular. And I feel like it's because in order for people to keep consuming animals, they need to every once in a while be reassured that it's morally justifiable and okay. And you know, a vegan quitting just happens to do that. But if somebody quits a keto diet that is loaded with meat, which they also love to eat, they don't wanna hear about somebody failing. That would not be nice. And I think another reason it isn't news is because a lot of people go into a keto diet being like, this is just a short term weight loss diet. That being said, a large portion of the community believes that it's the natural state of the body and that they should be in it long term. And then of course we have people that have been promoting it over a long period of time, like Mercola quitting, which has a lot of significance. In conclusion, it's really good that Dr. Mercola is quitting a you know, high animal fat keto diet, you know, for mortality and just understanding metabolism a little more despite still getting some things a little bit wrong. But I'm kind of annoyed that he's not doing it in a more public way. He should be just going on his platforms that he hasn't been banned from for misinformation, which, you know, at least his website being like, I have quit a keto diet because of mortality concerns and because of these metabolic reasons, the body needs carbohydrates, does best with carbohydrates. So you should maybe not be buying all of my keto books and products. Oh wait, he would never say that end part. And yeah, he is right about the cortisol aspect. We have studies showing keto dieters having higher cortisol levels, which are not good, but he's definitely wrong about that endotoxin issue. Yes, endotoxins are a concern, but fiber rich whole carbohydrates keep them down and animal fats and some refined sugars also can get it going up, which you don't wanna do. Anyway, let me know down below what you thought about all of this. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.